life. Okay? So for pro-lifers, the right is attributed to the fetus. So if I'm pro-life, to be technical, right, I am attributing rights to the fetus. Where do the duties go? Well, for pro-lifers, the duty is a mutual, mutually shared duty. If you're a pro-lifer, the duty is a mutually shared duty between the state and the mother. Both the mother and the state has an obligation for pro-lifers to respect the right of the unborn fetus. So if you're a pro-lifer, th this is just good for you to know, right? To be technical, because people talk, 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 they don't know what they're talking about. It gets uh, rather annoying sometimes, right? But if you're a pro-lifer, what you really mean with respect to the debate on rights and duties is that the child has a right, the fetus has a right, um, the fe assuming that it's even in the fetus stage, right? The, the fetus has a right, depending on how extreme it is. But the fetus has a right. Um, even maybe some, some might even go as far as saying the zygote has a right, right? Or at the point of conception, there's a right. Depending on how far down the rabbit hole we take it, doesn't matter. But we'll just say the fetus. The fetus has a right. And insofar as the fetus has a right, we are obligated to um, respect that right. Who's that we? Both the mother and the state. Okay. Now, if we are pro ch pro choice, right? If you're pro choice, where does that right exist? Well, the right can't exist with the child. If you're pro choice, the right can't exist with the child. The right for pro choice exists with the mother. The right exists with the mother, right? The mother has the right if you're pro-choice. Um, and what specific right is that? Many people articulate it in many different ways. Technically speaking, it is the right to what's known as self-determination. Right? The right to self-determination. The mother has the right to self-determination. It's my body, I do what I want with it. So. Obviously, we can't situate the obligation on the child, so we recognize that for pro-choice, to be technical, again, a lot of pro-choice advocates talk and they don't really understand sort of just the very basics of the assessment. If you're pro-choice, neither the right nor the duty um, rests with the child. The fetus gets neither right or duty. It, there is no right, there is no duty. The mother has the right, and obviously then the state assumes the duty. Right? So, for pro-choice, the mother attains the right, the right is the right to self-determination. The state gets the obligation, and it is the state's obligation to, spe to respect the mother's right to self-determination, her own body. If you're pro-life, then the um, child gets, or the fetus, or the zygote, or even conception, gets the right, and there is a shared obligation between the mother and the state to respect the right of the fetus. So, if I were to say that initially from the very beginning, just go in and start spouting off all of that jargon, it would have been rather, uh, it would have been overwhelming, I would imagine, but having worked through it slowly, that should make sense. And just so that it's clear, I'll say it one more time, sort of slowly, the distinction between pro-life and pro-choice, with respect to the discussion of rights, as just an example of the relationship between rights and duties, is that if you are a pro-lifer, then you attribute the right to the fetus and there's a corresponding duty shared, there's a corresponding obligation shared between the mother and the state to respect the right of the fetus. If you're pro-choice, then you recognize that the fetus has neither right or duty. It's not in the equation. The mother has the right and that right is the right to self-determination. She has the right to determine what she will or won't do with her body. And the obligation is then transposed onto the state, and the state now has the obligation to respect the woman's right to self-determination. And that's where the discourse on pro-choice, pro-life is theoretically properly situated. Again, not necessarily the intent of my discussion to talk about 
pro-choice, pro-life. What's really my purpose is to make the distinction between rights and duties, but I think if you understand that, you definitely get, and you should understand that, you definitely get the understanding between the relationship between rights, duties, obligations, and such, right? By seeing how rights and duties vary in application in this very specific, rather technical example. All right, and then lastly, number five, human rights are universal and generalizable. They are said to be, quote, equally possessed by all human beings everywhere. And that's, that's, that's rather obvious, right? So are the foundations. So uh, with that, that concludes the introductory discourse on human rights uh, and some of the foundational uh, accounts needed in order to understand human rights. I will continue my uh, analysis into section three. With that, I'm going to thank you for taking time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Have a good day.